Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're wondering what's going on with my hair, I woke up like this. Um, this is my Heatless Waves tutorial from last week. I decided I would film my makeup look for the end of that tutorial now. If you want to see how to get the Heatless Waves, go over to last week's tutorial and you will see how it's all done. Recently on my stories, when I've done my makeup, it's been really, really simple, but lots of you have said you love my eye makeup and it's a really simple look. It's no eyeshadow, it's literally just pencil. So I thought I would do that today and show you how I achieve it because it's really easy. So to start with, I'm gonna use my well-loved and well-trusted Murad Oil and Pore Control Mattifier. This contains SPF 45. This is a lotion rather than a primer, but it is a really nice product to put underneath your makeup if you're not wearing a primer. I find I don't need a pore filling primer because this just works at keeping my pores looking a little bit less visible and the oil stays at bay like eight times longer than if I wasn't wearing it. Sometimes I forget that I've put this on in the morning and then when it comes to the evening and I'm about to take my makeup off, I always think, wow, like I don't look oily, because I wear this under even Bare Minerals Original Powder Foundation, even just under SPF, it's just a great way, even if you're not wearing makeup during isolation, it's a great way to still prevent you from looking oily. This is one of those products that's always sold out because it's so good, it really is good. I'm gonna add a link in the description bar for you. A couple of tutorials ago, you know I used the Marc Jacobs um, remarkable foundation which is this one and I absolutely adored it however it was a little bit yellow for me so I've got two new shades um, I have bisque medium 26 and 34 beige medium I think today I'm going to take the dark shade around the circumference of my face because my body has got a tiny bit of color from just sitting outside not much tan yet but we're not quite into the summer and then the slightly lighter shade just through the center and I'm gonna work it in with my fingers so I'm just taking a finger's worth of dots to apply around the face because you really only need a very small amount of this. A little goes such a long way and it blends out so nice. I'm really, really loving this foundation. I put this on the other day and my sister had to drop some bits off to the house. I said to her, like do you like my foundation this is the Marc Jacobs remarkable one knowing that it's super full coverage she was like you don't even look like you're wearing anything you just look flawless and I said it's because I blended it in with my fingers if you do it with a brush even though it still looks completely flawless you can still see you're wearing makeup like any foundation but if you blend in with your fingers this stuff is incredible this is darker than my skin tone, which will probably match me during the summer. With a little bit of colour to my skin, naturally, lots of people ask if I wear fake tan and I don't. I will apply a gradual tanner just to my face and neck because I don't have any of this in the sun due to my melasma. So when I'm not wearing a gradual tanner on my face, I like to match it. But I don't like to have that all over because otherwise it just looks a bit too dark. So taking that around the areas that the sun would naturally hit so it looks as if my face has naturally got a bit of colour and then we'll take a slightly lighter shade through the centre just to make it look a bit more three dimensional and less flat. Use your fingers the same way you would a beauty blender so just pat that into the skin and it will give you that kind of airbrushed flawless finish. It really does still bug me how expensive the foundation is and I understand they've put them in glass bottles for that very reason. You know, you buy something expensive, you need it to feel expensive, you want the whole experience that you've spent however much on a foundation and everything about it warrants that money. However, how do you get all the rest of the product that sits around here and in the bottle where you can't, you just can't access it all and that, things like that really bother me. If I spend all that money out, I want a squeezy tube where I can get all the product out. I know you're all with me on that because we're all, we're not tight, but if you spend a lot of money, you want to make the most of the product you've bought, don't you? Just pressing the lighter shade through the center of the face in a bit of a V shape down here, just to add a little bit of lightness. Because this is such a high pigment and quite fluid, you can really get a nice coverage, but without that weight 
to your skin. So instead of using a concealer, you can just pat this on in the areas that you need a bit more coverage. And it's lightweight, but you've still got the high pigment left behind to give you coverage. It's really good. I've just filled my brow in with my MAC Shape and Shade Brow Tint. As you can see, it's got a really small tip at the end. This one is a tiny bit thinner because I trimmed it because I wanted it to be similar to the Brow Blade by Urban Decay. And again, the reason I don't use the Urban Decay Brow Blade is because the shades are just a bit too warm. So as you can see, it's a really subtle difference. It's just enough to make it look a little bit fuller, um, super, super natural. I do have a up close tutorial on how to do this, so I will link it on screen for you. If not, you can just kind of skip through this bit, but because I usually skip it, I thought I would include it today. So I start at the base of my natural eyebrow hair and just start flicking the pen upwards. As long as you've got a good base, the rest can be nice and feathery. So just work your way along, flicking those upwards. I start to pull those little lines upwards, but with a really light, soft hand. And you can come above your eyebrow, like you can come right up if you wanted. It makes no difference. As long as you've got a really soft finish, you can then go in with a little bit of concealer or a dry brush and just wipe away the line so it's nice and straight. Once I kind of get to around here, I then start bringing the hair strokes this way. It's kind of how my natural brows look. This one, I have to brush the hairs upwards slightly and fill in that little arch bit there because they sit nice this way, but then they look a lot lighter this side. Um, whereas this side, they grow slightly differently it's just working with your brows um, to get them as symmetrical as possible but knowing that they're never going to be identical and then just use a very soft light hand when you're doing the tail of your eyebrow then take a spoolie and just softly run it through the very front of the eyebrow so that they're a little bit softer colour will remain but it will just soften it slightly. Just go in with a brush that's got a little bit of product on it and that takes it away and that's it. Then I like to set it in place with my 24 hour brow setter by Benefit Cosmetics. In my opinion it is the ultimate. I like this one because it's clear. Brows are on. I'm going to set my skin using the Bare Minerals Original Powder Foundation. This one is a powder to cream and the shade I'm using is Medium Beige 12. Now obviously this is a foundation so we are applying a foundation over a foundation but if you use a very light amount you can just use it to set your skin but gives you a tiny bit more coverage. I like to do it over the nose because that's the area that the pores are a little bit more visible and I always find if you put a powder over it and kind of buff it in, they just become invisible. It's lovely. The pencil I'm going to use is by Charlotte Tilbury. This is Classic Brown in the shade Audrey. Starting on the outer edge, I'm going to run that pencil close to the root of the eyelashes all the way along the eye. Now a good tip to do this is to look down into a mirror, it just makes it a little bit easier, it stretches the skin out slightly and also if you do have hooded eyes and they're not too hooded that you can still create a winged liner effect, then looking down is definitely going to help you. Also placing your finger at the outer corner when you're blending is going to be a massive help because it's going to pull the skin nice and taut which allows you to soften that eyeliner with a tiny brush creating more of a smooth finish rather than one that's slightly jaggedy. Now take your time when you're doing this, there's no rush, you don't want to accidentally stab yourself in the eye because it is easily done. As soon as you start to blink you're going to smear it everywhere so just take your time when you're doing it, there's no rush. You can see using the brush I've created a bit more of a thicker wing on the outer half of the eye. That's kind of the look that we want to go for because we want to bring it out so it looks more almondy and gets a little thicker towards the outer edge. You can use your finger to press over the top of the pencil to soften it. That's the beauty of using a pencil. Now we're going to create our wing. As you can see, I'm following the same shape as my lower eyelid. So as it curves up slightly, that's the same angle that I'm going to continue with my eyeliner. 
I also pulled the skin quite taut so I could get a nice smooth line with the pencil and now I'm using the tip of the brush to create the wing so I'm pulling it up and out to extend it and then I'm pulling it back on itself to thicken it. It is possible to create a winged liner with a hooded eye. The only difference would be you would look straight into a mirror directly in front of you so you can get the angle perfectly right. So the angle of your wing needs to look right when your eyes are open, not when they're closed. So when your eyes are closed and you've drawn that line on with your eyes open, when they close there is going to be a disconnect between the eyeliner. Again, the purpose of this is so that when your eyes are open, the eyeliner sits in the right area. Then you can close your eye and fill in that gap. It won't look as seamless when your eyes are closed, but the idea is that it looks perfect when they're open. So once again, I'm holding the skin tool, pulling the pencil backwards on myself to create a bit of a wing shape. The idea is to show you that it doesn't have to be perfect because you can go in with the very tip of your brush at the base of that eyeliner and pull the colour outwards to create that wing and then pull it back on itself to thicken it. And then you just keep buffing over the top of it very softly to diffuse it. Now you may want to wipe the bristles of your brush onto a towel or onto a tissue to clean it and then go back in and buff over the top. I quite like the kind of smudgy dewy finish that the eyeliner gives on its own and I don't mind if it looks like that for the rest of the day. If you're more of a fan of a matte finish or you want it to have a little bit more longevity you can go over it with a brown powder. So I've applied the eyeliner to the top and lower waterline. I've also smudged it between the root of my lower eyelashes and now I'm going in with a lash primer to give a little bit of volume to my eyelashes and then I'm using the Lancome Monsieur Big mascara. What I like about this is it really does volumise the root of your eyelashes. It does create volume that where you look really up close it can make your eyelashes look a little bit twiggy but from a distance that's kind of the look we're going for because we want the eyelashes to be the standout part of the eyes to bring more emphasis to that and make them look a little fluffier and almost change the shape of the eye to be more almond we're going to apply some individual cluster lashes just to the outer half of the eye and as they get towards the centre of the eye, they're going to get a little bit shorter. So they're going to be longer on the outer edge, but they're going to get slightly shorter towards the centre, which means they're going to create a bit of a straight line along the top, which is going to give us that almond effect. If you are new to applying eyelashes or it's a technique you've not tried yet, then I will link on screen my eyelash tutorial for you from a few years ago. I should probably do an updated one, but it is quite in depth on how to apply individual clusters, strip lashes. I also have an eyelash hack, so I will list the eyelash playlist on screen for you. Once you've applied the cluster lashes to both eyes, it should look something like this. So that is the eye makeup done, no eyeshadow, a beautiful soft winged out look using pencil and then just kind of creating a wing shape with the lashes. So we're only taking it kind of very softly to the halfway mark and just making them slightly shorter as we get towards the inner corner. So they are almost kind of straight out, it just creates that almond effect to the eyes. So moving on to the skin, I'm going to use the new, because it's a new formulated version of the Soleil Bronze Universal. This is now called the Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. This is a slightly newer formulated version. It does contain coconut oil, but if you are somebody who suffers with breakouts, don't panic too much because you're not slathering your face in coconut oil. It's just an addition to the formula. Lots of people have said that it's been making their makeup move, that it's sliding, they don't like the colour. I've already tested it. The only part that I don't necessarily like about this is the smell. It's got like that rapeseed oil smell to it and I can't stand that smell. So I kind of miss the scent of the original, but I prefer the colour of this. It's not as orange. I would definitely say it's more bronzy. And having used it a couple of times, I can honestly say it hasn't made my makeup move around at all. It's not as thick as it originally was, which I definitely think is better. As you can see, when it goes onto the skin, it looks beautiful. It adds a beautiful tan to the skin, but without looking super orange. And some people had messaged and said they secretly preferred the orange appearance. Um, I'm more of a fan of the bronzy feel and I really really like it. It did sell out when it first came out. I signed up to John Lewis and waited for it to come in stock so I'm going to link it below and hopefully you guys if you want to try the new version can get your hands on it. It's not majorly different, it's really not. It's really reminiscent of the original formula 
I just think it looks and feels nicer. I just don't like the smell. So I've added that into the cheekbone area, also taking it around the hairline. I love that healthy glow it gives. It's almost like a dewy finish, but without being tacky and without having tons of light reflecting particles. It's a very adult glow. I love it. This is definitely, definitely one I will be using on my wedding. For blush today, I have the new Lip and Cheek Sticks by Stila. I have the shades Sheer Lilium and Sheer Petunia. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have already seen swatches of these. They are stunning. I specifically wanted Sheer Petunia to try it because it is a beautiful coral shade. It has a very subtle glow to it. They're very reminiscent of the Nude Sticks Nudies. These are also all over face glow, lip and cheek blushes. The only thing with the Stila ones is I find they're a little bit thinner. So when you put them on, you wouldn't necessarily want to just blend it straight out because I feel like it's that much thinner that it's going to move the makeup underneath whereas the nude sticks are a little bit thicker so you can be a little bit more aggressive with them without that worry of moving the underneath base if that makes sense. I'm going to use the Sheer Lilium colour. I also find with this packaging you need to hold that and turn it to get the stick to come up. This isn't that sturdy so when you squeeze it it cracks the blusher as you can see at the top. I've now got cracks across it so that's a shame. I know it probably doesn't mean a lot to other people, but I think if you've paid out for it, you'd be a little bit disappointed, wouldn't you? So I'm not going to apply it directly to the cheek. You can do, but I'm going to dip my brush into it, like I do when I use the nude sticks. And I'm going to pop this on the apples of the cheeks. I've chosen this one because it's a bit more subtle. The sheer petunia. You can blend it right down, but it is a lot more of a pop of colour. This one's more of a neutral, dusky rose pink soft and a little bit like the nude sticks you get a glowy finish to the skin the nude sticks nudies bloom give you a really dewy finish whereas their nudies kind of in the nude they have a matte finish still gives you a kind of uh natural glow it isn't it isn't dewy at all it is a mattifying finish but when you've blended it onto the skin it doesn't mattify you where you look powdery this is kind of in between those two finishes they're also magnetic so they stick to each other which is really satisfying. <laughs> For my lips today I'm going to use this Nude Sticks Magnetic Lip Plush Paint in the shade Wakiki Rose. I love these. If you've seen my previous video using these a while back, uh, they're so unique in their texture. It's like velvet, like actual velvet. Although they dry down they kind of still stay silky. It's, re it's really unique, it's hard to describe. I really like them. If you're interested in trying nude sticks, I do have a discount code. Shona20 will get you 20% off your entire order in the cart. So I'm gonna take my hair down, finish last week's tutorial, and then I'll be back to show you my hair. So that completes this week's makeup tutorial. If you want to see how I got this heatless curly hair, check out last week's tutorial. I'll link it on screen for you now. All the products I've used will be listed linked in the description bar. Don't forget to take advantage of the discount code for Nude Sticks if you want to try some of their products. They do ship pretty much worldwide. Even if you're in the UK, you can use my discount code on their website. As always, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to follow me outside of YouTube on my social handles at Show Me Makeup. And I will see you next week. Bye.